the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. O God, save me by your name, by your power defend my cause. O God, hear my prayer. Give ear to the words of my mouth. Good morning and welcome. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness, grant we pray may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked said among themselves, thinking not aright, let us beseech the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for the transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and styles himself a child of the Lord. Merely to see him is a hardship for us, because this life is not like that of others. And different are his ways. He judges our debased. He holds aloof from our past and from things impure. He calls the blessed the destiny of the just and boasts that God is his Father. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For does the just one be the Son of God? He will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test, and we have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. These were their thoughts, but they erred, for their wickedness blinded them, and they knew not his counsels of God. Neither did they count or on a recompense of holiness, nor discern the innocent soul's reward. For the Lord, thanks be to God. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them the Lord delivers them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He watches over all his bounds, not one of them shall be broken. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. 
No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus moved about within Galilee. He did not wish to travel in Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. But the Jewish feast of the tabernacles was near. But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, he himself also went up, not openly, but as it were written in secret. Some of the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Is he not the one they are trying to kill? And look, he is speaking openly, and they saw nothing to him. Could the authorities have realized that he is the Christ? We know where he is from. When the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. So Jesus cried out in the temple area as he was teaching and said, You know me and also know where I am from. Yet I did not come on my own, but the one who sent me, whom you did not know, is true. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. So they tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand upon him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know him. I know him. leader of the family, is to be that great teacher. And everybody wants to come to know in the teaching how you know that Jesus is real. And real as real could be. And I'm forever grateful and I'm forever thankful for my father on his knees. Head down, I can still see the image of that brown, black chair, but I can still see the chair in that living room on the knees. Praying, knowing that Jesus Christ is in his midst, and that Jesus would bring him through whatever catastrophe he faced during the very difficult times of farming. My friends, to know Jesus, to know Jesus is to know that there's power in us. You know, when we don't know, we judge, we condemn. They didn't know Jesus. They knew themselves. And they're more worried about themselves than coming to know Jesus. Because if we know him, and looking directly behind me right now, the power, the power of that crucifixion, 
crucifixion lives in us. That same power that raised Jesus is the same power that will raise us and raise our lives and lead us and bless us and guide us and protect us. The same power that calms all fear, the same power that calmed the chaos of the sea is the same power that lives in us. As his holy disciples, as his sons and daughters of the absolute beloved. And it's a challenge at times to see that. It's a challenge at times to realize that. And so many times it seems like it's words, but it's real, it's living. My instruction going forward for my three parishes is three words. It's faith, it's hope, it's love. And I'm not going to worry about anything else. I'm not even going to waste my energy. Faith, hope, and love. Most powerful, transcending words that live in us. You know, like when someone does something really amazing, or someone makes the, the greatest ever bread, or rolls, or, or, or whatever it is, and, and your heart longs for that. And you're nourished, and you're sustained, and you know each way that only that person can do it in that way and in that light, in that goodness. Or if you take a bite, you say, I don't like it. Or they wait to see, or you don't eat enough of it. Huge disappointment. Just think how Jesus feels when everything has been done. Everything. Everything. And it's not just up there in heaven waiting for our arrival. It's living in us. And we need to let it grow and come alive. And I guarantee if every day, every day, and that's what I saw in Dad on his knees every day. I couldn't define it now when I was a child. But I can define it now. It lives in me. Faith on your knees. Hope that God will deliver whatever we're going through. That God will lead us through. That Jesus is in our midst. With a love, a love, a love. Those aren't just words. Those are virtues. And why not let this be the best Lent ever? For the first time, to really, in a deep level that you've never, ever experienced, faith. Because that is everything that we are about as Christians, as disciples.
of Jesus Christ. And maybe we have lost our way, and maybe we are away from that, or maybe we don't understand that, or we don't get it. It's just gone dead. Let it live. Let it come alive. And whatever it takes to feed that. As I close, as I close today, just think about that. We are hearing, 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 hearing. We don't know what to believe. We don't know what's going to change. We don't know what's going to happen. But we hear faith. We hear hope. We hear love. We hear everything. Trusting in God's providence and His mercy and His divine love, we now turn our prayers and petitions before the very throne of grace. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for Archbishop George Lucas. We pray for all of our bishops, all of our priests, all of our deacons, all of our religious all of our laity, our entire church, with so many things at our side right now and so much different things, that we always remember three things, faith, hope, and love. For this we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for that beautiful medical team. And if anyone is showing us faith, hope, and love, right now it's that model, it's that living example of faith being faithful to their patients, hoping for a recovery, and loving them through their sickness. We are blessed beyond measure to have these gifts and talents of these dedicated people. And we pray for their safety. We pray for their well-being. We pray as they're anxious about their families and taking the virus home to them. The good Lord will bless them and protect them and give them all the strength they need as they live that example of faith, hope, and love every day. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I pray for my three beautiful parishes of St. Peter's, St. Joseph's, and St. Patrick's. There is no doubt, in fact, it would be denied to say we are now different from this virus. But I pray that the biggest difference is there's more faith, there's more hope, and there's more love. And I pray that every day, whatever happens, whatever we face, whatever comes our way, no panic, no fear, more faith, more hope, and more love. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray today in such a beautiful way in gratitude and thanksgiving and love. Thanks so much for my family, my mom, my dad, for instilling faith, hope, and love in my heart, my grandparents, my beautiful community of Danbury that had all the faith and hope and love that I would make it to the altar of God and become one of his priests and their words of encouragement. And all those people and all of our amazing friends have been reaching out to in faith, hope, and love that fill us with goodness and graciousness. 
we will continue to be that light and that model and that we're grateful and thankful that God has placed such beautiful people in our lives. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray especially right now for Archbishop Lucas, who really has a lot on his plate, trying to run two dioceses, trying to kind of keep everything together and all the things that are happening day in and day out and making major decisions, that he too will grow in faith, hope, and love of Jesus Christ. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray so beautifully for those sick that have asked for our prayers and those that are so sad because nobody can come see them at this time. We pray that our love and our prayers will lead and bless and guide their beautiful hearts. And we pray for those that are dying that need a priest that a priest will be able to go and get to that bedside and give that soul all it needs for a faithful journey back to the Father this very day. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our military. Again, faith, hope, and love and a dedication and service to our nation to keep us free and safe protected from all harm. We continue to pray as this coronavirus affects families, deployments, people are trying to get home and trying to get back to their families that so desperately want to see each other for peace, tranquility, and for able to get all this worked out so they can get home for their safety and well-being. We pray for our veterans and we pray in a most blessed, most deeply blessed way for the brave women and men that have served this nation and died in the line of duty, that their souls are resting in the hands of Almighty God. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for a conversion of our nation on the greatest evil that we have ever seen and ever faced, the legalization of abortion, a direct attack against the very dignity the very goodness and holiness of life. And we pray for an end to this grievous act. And we pray for a greater respect for all life, from a natural birth to a natural death. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I join my family in praying in gratitude and in thanksgiving to Almighty God for all the graces that he imparted into our hearts, all the strength he gave our family as we were trying to get to meet my great nephew, and all the strength and grace he poured into my nieces and all their words and encouragement and strength and love. It truly brings a lot of faith and hope and love to our family. And we are so grateful that we get to be with him and see him and experience the love that he has poured on this family. We continue to pray for him and his well-being, his happiness, and his joy, and that he will grow and develop and become the man that God desires him to be. In gratitude, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And for all your thoughts and all your prayers and all your petitions, you so beautifully hold this beautiful morning in the deep, beautiful silence of your beautiful heart. this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, some days there are no words to what we're experiencing, to what we're walking through, to this unknown place. But you fill our hearts with three virtues, faith, hope, and love. Lord God, I pray for every soul watching this this day, either live or later in the day, that through their experience of hearing your good news, your desire for us to know you, that every day they will work to increase their faith, their hope, and love, and find their way in whatever words that we face, to make all of these prayers through Christ.
Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the mind and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, 
and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Anthon. In Christ, we have redemption by his blood and the forgiveness of our sins in accord with the riches of his grace. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, through a former ways left behind, 
we may be renewed in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for Almighty God's blessings. Look upon your servants, O Lord, and your goodness protect with heavenly assistance those who trust in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements. Again, tomorrow is Saturday. I will do the daily Mass for Saturday at 9. Every day at 9, so I'll do the daily Mass for Saturday at 9. And then there will be a Sunday Mass at 9 on Sunday. And back by popular demand, I'm going to try to do my children's liturgy again at 1 o'clock. I think some adults like the children's liturgy as much as well, so young, old, everyone can tune in live at 1, and then it will be posted. And we'll have music again and try to do my best and, and let God do the rest, because faith, hope, and love, that's truly all I got. That's all I got. And I'm grateful and I am thankful again for the words of encouragement, for the love, for the food, just every little thing you're doing right now means the world to me. And we continue to pray for each other. We pray for an end of this virus. Still trying to work out how to do confession, so please pray. Um, the bishop really does not want us gathering more than 10 people. doesn't want gathering of groups. And I, my fear is, I, I know you want to go, you're good and faithful, and how we do that, I'm still working that out. But I will get there. God will get me there, one step at a time. And again, if you do need confession, if you do need something, call me. Call my phone, okay? I'm happy to meet with you. We can make that work out. I'll even come to you. So that's all you gotta do is call me. And we'll work it out. And thanks for your patience. Thanks for your understanding. Uh, we're just trying to do everything we can. Maybe we're being a little overprotective or whatever. But I don't think we're going to regret it in the end when we save lives and help each other with this. And this is totally new charted territory and water. But again, and put this in your heart. Faith, hope, and love. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.